Somewhere down in my trunk of goodies in here. There it is. Hi, people on the internet. I'm gonna continue working on the MR2 today. Just got some parts from powder coating that are going back on the engine, and if you're new and you want to get caught up, above my head is a link to when those parts came off. Fred actually picked the parts up for me this morning, so I technically have not seen them yet. I got here later in the afternoon. Ooh, they're right here. Ooh. Ooh. This looks so much better. I can't believe how good it came out, all the stuff. If you're near Tucson and you want to get powder coating done, the place is called the Elegant Iron. I will absolutely be going back to them for more work, probably on the Ranger actually. I'm getting my greasy fingerprints all over it. I love the look of this raw sandblasted stainless right here. It's pretty. I also had them only go up to a certain point, so that way when I put the rubber couplings on there, they can create a nice tight seal. I was worried it wouldn't get a good seal on the textured stuff over here. They also machined the face of the font right here, where it says Toyota. So I want to test fit this thing right now to see how it looks in the car, because I also got a new oil cap as well. But the problem is the new cam trigger that I bought for this thing it, it fits kind of like an OEM cam trigger. It goes on the end of the camshaft itself rather than in the distributor port, which means this can't go on because I got to access the end of the camshaft. It really sucks because I want to put this on tonight. I can at least get an idea of how it looks though. Oh yeah. That is going to look so good. This guy right here is my factory map sensor. I'm not going to need that anymore. And there's a spaghetti web of hoses for the map sensor. And then I got the innovative map sensor right here, which is a double redundancy. I think I can get rid of both of these and just send the signal to the new one. That way my boost gauge still works. So that means most of this crap can go away because I'm not gonna have a AFM anymore. It uses a speed density. Yay! Wait, I could just take this entire cluster off. Idle air control valve requires vacuum. I mean, it literally has air in the, the title. Is this thing bolted on down here, but 10 mil? It is, okay. How the hell am I gonna get to that hose clamp? There you go. I need to get a hose uh, plug on the back side of that. Is it a 12? It's a 12? You'd be kidding me. Is a 10 mil right there and is a 10 mil right there. It's a HH-60 flying overhead. Two HH-60s flying overhead. Well, I don't need this thing for the plug wires anymore either, because I'm not gonna have plug wires. So get that. I don't know if that's actually Spanish for a socket, but we're gonna go with it. No more thingamabobber. I'm brave doing that right next to an open valve cover. There's a saran wrap over it. I need to take that off. Who the hell is this last vacuum hose? Oh, this is gonna be fun. How the hell? There we go. That should be it. The entire vacuum system. Right here. That's that's like a five pound weight reduction right there. I'm joking. If you guys would like these project cars to get finished, I need to shut up and just work. So without further ado, let's kick off some time lapse.
there by the swamp cooler, how it's dark out. I just spent eight hours working. It flew by and the car is not back together. But I did get something back together. I wasn't planning on getting back together. Ta-da! Valve cover is on, along with a brand new TRD oil cap, fresh from Toyota. I wasn't planning on putting this on in the beginning of the video, but the Hall effect sensor I was going to use instead is back ordered for like 45 days. So that's a no-go. I'm just gonna go with the stuff I have right now and get the car running. And if I want later on, I'll switch it out. Okay, so this right here is a brand new EA1 plug I got from Blander Motorsports. And they just added on their website a bunch of MR2 plugs because I looked up every single part number for all the plugs in the factory harness and I told them just use my invoice and you can add it to the website under MR2 and now you can order all these Toyota plugs. This one I could not get. This is the other end of EA1. I got this little keychain full of deep pinner tools and all I gotta do is pull all these out. The level of patience you have to have to be able to do this is astounding. Oh, come on. Got it! I gotta take this double prong one and stab it in the back side, and then the single prong one and stab it in the front side. And hopefully, it should come out of its hole. Haha! <laughs> This is like shaving a Lego person's private parts. Ha! Just like that. Fresh, clean, and no more fuzzy stuff. Although I do appreciate a good beard. And now all of those need to get inserted into this. Hello tomorrow, welcome to tomorrow. I cannot believe how much time this wiring project is taking. I knew it was going to take a while, but damn. Because I'm deleting the AFM on the car, I had to get a new intake, and my new intake is now here. This right here is the red filter. This is the double layer oiled filter, and it's red too, because I don't want a Christmas car. EA1 is now Fully complete. I got everything pinned and I actually added a couple extra circuits to this in empty slots. So now I'm gonna do the other end of this that will run through the rear firewall and go to their corresponding plugs, which is primarily just the cruise control and fans and AC. These three circuits right here for cruise control and uh, the clutch signal, those now just go into the EA1 plug. It made sense to have all the cruise control stuff on the same plug. I didn't want to have to route anything through the intake manifold. I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible, but I don't know where else to stick the wires for the coil packs, the injectors, IACV, and TPS. There's like nowhere else to route it, so it's not that big of a bundle. Somewhere down in my trunk of goodies in here, there it is. These right here, more Toyota OEM plugs all for those circuits I just mentioned. So, back to work. Really wish I would have thought of this yesterday when I was putting this hardware in there. Now I gotta take it back off. I'm that OCD, I literally used the torque wrench on this hardware. Put it to 36 inch pounds. Are these threaded? Wait. Oh, this is actually a really nice piece of hardware. I like the way this looks. All right, so these studs go from the underside. Yeah, just like that. That's nice. Brand new Denso coil pack. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's so nice. Look at that. So, so good. Lock that right down. Hell yeah, dude. I love this. Wait, how the fuck? That's a trick. How do you get that? Ah, just like that. All right. False alarm. Also, medium key. That's a real key, by the way. I, uh, to verify all the part numbers to make sure it's actually what I want to order. Because sometimes, like, the part number, you order by the part number, and then what comes in, for whatever reason, isn't what you were looking for. 
I just go on Rock Auto because they have the actual photos of every individual item and then you can verify visually with the part number. It's helpful. Tech tip. Tech tip Tuesday. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. So number four just goes its own way. Does its own thing. I, uh, I phoned a friend. I called in an expert to give me some advice on this. He builds thousand plus wheel horsepower vehicles for a living and he's a systems and electrical engineer. Didn't you used to work for GM too? Yeah, I did software design for, for GM. And then, but didn't you work for FCA also? Yeah, I was a, a tuner calibrator at the FCA. I worked on a four cylinder there. And now you work for Raytheon. Yeah. And your prior Air Force. Right. So this dude's a G. <laughs> Jake is not from State Farm though. I get myself into trouble in my garage and then figure out what I did wrong. And that's how I learned. <laughs> that's the way it works. Yeah. He's gonna kind of verify what I've laid out already, make sure I'm not doing anything wrong. And then since he's probably gonna tune the car, if I can get him to tune the car. Will you tune the car? I can do that. Yay! <laughs> but yeah, also he's building a, a Colorado right now. What is your Colorado? 09 Colorado has a LS3 Borg 94 millimeter nitrous methanol. All my extra accessories, all kinds of nonsense on it that probably shouldn't be on there. It's a mess, but it's fun. How much power is it gonna have? Built for 2000. <laughs> what? It's an idea. I'm not sure if it's gonna do it. But. So when that truck's done, if you guys want to see a review of a 2,000 horsepower Colorado, please let me know. I made a diagram on the dry erase board now, so I can start checking off all the circuits as I go to the stuff on the engine harness, which I have not done yet. And because Jake knows how ECUs function on the electrical engineering side, which I do not, he's letting me know stuff that I didn't even know. Like for instance, I'm gonna need some of these injector ballast resistors for my OEM injectors for the ECU to function so it won't get burnt up. So I need to get some 50 watt 4.7 ohm uh, resistors to add on my 12 volt signal. If I upgrade the injectors, which I plan on, then I'll go to, what was it like low impedance versus high impedance? Sure, yeah, I mean, it, it, it has to fit the, the, the rail. Um, I'll but, get a new rail too. Yeah, for, but for the electrical side, you just wanna make sure that you pull that resistor out and then drive it directly off the circuit so it's high impedance doesn't load the, uh, the driver as much. Okay, the idle air control valve on this thing never functioned the entire time I've had it. And he just explained to me why the car is randomly dying while I was driving. That was one of the issues I was having because the center uh, 12 volt source that goes to that circuit, the wire was broken somewhere in the factory wiring harness and that I never got around to because it would run most of the time and then it just kind of stopped. That's why I'm doing this now. It's only a 12 volt in the center and then just two grounds and then... Right, yeah. Okay. It's, it's sort of like an H bridge, um, but, but it's just like, a, it's an old school stepper motor. So you put a ground to one side and it kind of it turns the motor one way and then put a ground to the other side it turns it the other way we don't oh. know which which side is going to open and which is going to close so and the factory ecu used to determine which one of those to close at whatever time it needed it to open right. and close it. Oh, right okay yeah, this is a yes uh, slow path uh, idle speed control and the ecm is monitoring engine speed and uh, ac load that kind of stuff um, and if you need more if your, your rpm is dropping like it was for you uh, if it's functioning it will give it more airflow but for you, yeah, if with a 12 volts gun, then it uh, didn't have enough air, and that's probably what was killing the uh, engine in the parking lots. We're looking in the Lynx TO right now to see what kind of current this thing needs to make sure I don't need to run a larger gauge wire 
for the power supply for the ECU because from the factory it just had a 20 gauge wire that was split to two channels plus B and plus B1 each for 20 gauge wires they're really one 20 gauge that split to two 20 gauge wires I went into the ECU this ECU might require more juice than the factory one which means I'm gonna have to redo a bunch of wire cam trig got these figured out and so I know how to wire this to the Hall effect sensor. These are the corresponding colors on the Hall effect sensor that will connect to the Link ECU shielded wires. It is now after nine o'clock at night. Jake just left and we got 95% of the stuff figured out. I don't know how on earth a normal person could do this because that dude is like an extremely skilled electrical engineer and there was a still a couple things where we have to dig in deeper to figure out how to wire this up. Something I have to find out tomorrow from Link is whether or not the inductive load drives have a shunt for flyback voltage. I didn't even know what the hell that meant. Luckily I had an engineer helping me, so I have to check on that. And then I am actually going to order injectors now, so that way I don't need these injector ballast resistors. I like completely just lost my train of thought. I'm really hungry and tired, it's late. So there's obviously gonna be another video in this. I hope someone out there is getting some value from this video. If you plan on doing a standalone on one of these SW20s, hopefully this provides useful information to you. And I think the next video, I should have everything pinned, plugged, wires routed to their sensors, hooked up. So I'll stop rambling now. I'm sorry there's a lot of talking towards the end of this video, but this is a mind fuck to try to figure out this stuff. And I'm not an electrical engineer. So I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye. <laughs>